Hi, so welcome back. This is Logic. Um, today we're doing 6.1 Propositional Logic. Um, also, I want to apologize. Sorry, some of the video quality has been really poor in the last few sessions, and that's just my fault. So anyway, um, I'm going to do my best to try to keep it higher quality so you can watch it and it's somewhat, you can actually see what you're watching. So in this section, we're beginning our chapter on propositional logic. <clears throat> Unlike our previous chapter, previous two chapters, we've been, which were on categorical logic, which just simply concerned categorical syllogisms and categorical statements, with propositional logic, we're gonna do something really quite different. And I think you'll find something that's much more powerful in terms of giving us a much wider, broader, and more powerful tool for assessing um, arguments made in ordinary language. Um, but the very key difference that we begin with is that in uh, propositional logic, what we're dealing with is not the core, the atoms, as you might say, the, 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 the key components we deal with, they're not the terms, right, as they were in categorical logic, but rather we're dealing with entire propositions, whole statements. And what we do in propositional logic is we take a whole statement, say if someone says, for instance, um, cats are better than dogs, and instead of saying, making, being concerned with the logical relation between cats and dogs, the classes of cats and dogs as we were in categorical logic, in propositional logic we just say, no, let's just use a symbol for that whole statement, and let's just call it C, right? Um, and so we'll see, and so we're going to really completely change how we assess and how we symbolize statements, and we're not going to be utilizing these syllogistic forms, uh, we're not going to be doing figures and moods, we're not going to be doing Venn diagrams anymore. Um, and it's going to be, I, in many things that I tell people is that if you, some people like categorical logic more than propositional logic, I really see it as the difference between people who like geometry versus people who like algebra. And I see propositional logic as the algebra of it. Um, so <laughs> I don't know, that may either scare you or make you happy, I don't know. Um, but let's just go ahead and say a few things about propositional logic. So 6.1 propositional logic, what we're going to be doing is symbolizing specific statements. Now, in order to do this, we're going to be introducing a number of what we call logical operators or logical connectives. There's actually five of them. There's negation, conjunction, disjunction, the conditional, and the biconditional. So those are really our five operators. And that's the way in which we combine different statements together. Um, or groups of statements, I should say, right? Because, say for instance, I say, um, circuses are wonderful. And then I say, and Joe, and Joe loves circuses. We could symbolize that with um, C for circuses are wonderful, and J for Joe loves circuses, right? Um, and actually, there, those two statements are connected because I said, circuses are wonderful and Joe loves circuses. And so actually, how, how, sorry, this is a crazy example, but how we'd symbolize this, we'd say C and J, right? And that's a logical connective. Where we have our C, and we have our J, there's each statements, but here's the logical relation, this is the logical connective, what we might call the logical operator. And so, really what you need to do in this first chapter, because we're going to be utilizing this in our next lesson, 6.2, we're actually going to define um, the truth conditions under which these logical operators can yield valid or, I guess, alternatively invalid arguments. Um, we're going to talk about that later, but here's what we need to do in this section, is you just need to get used to the symbolism, and get used to how to write a correct symbolism. And the way your book refers to it is a WIF, or WFF, a well-formulated formulation, um, or formula. Basically, it's just kind of, you have to learn the syntax of how to write um, correct um, propositional statements, ones that can actually be analyzed, right? So here's one case, right? So let me just erase this real quick. Okay. so. Just to give you a sense of the different operators or the connectives we use, there's five of them. And I want to quickly just write them up on the board, show you what the symbols are, and then we'll talk about how to create a well-formulated uh, propositional statement, uh, or a series of statements. Uh, the first is negation, right? And that's symbolized with the tilde, and the ordinary language there is the word not or not, right? And I'll go over these in just a second. The second is called conjunction. And we're symbolizing it with a dot. And for those of you who are, since we're doing it online, it's not everyone's going to have the symbolism in their computer. We're just using a period, but basically just a dot. And the ordinary language for that is and. 
your combining statements. The third is called disjunction, and that's symbolized by a lowercase r, right? And it's basically any sort of either or statement, right? And for those of you who think about this, you'll realize that when we talk about disjunctions, there's really two types of disjunction. There's the inclusive disjunction and the exclusive disjunction. Inclusive disjunction means um, either or, but possibly both. Exclusive really means either or, but not both. Um, in terms of what we're doing in propositional logic, um, we're, the disjunction here is inclusive, so it can mean both. Um, the fourth is the conditional, right? Which is uh, at least in the Hurley text is symbolized with the horse shape, um, and we're just using uh, a little a greater than symbol in online. And that basically means if then, so that's an if then relationship, right? Hence, it's a conditional relationship. And the fifth here is called a biconditional. In some cases, the material biconditional, and that's symbolized by a triple bar. Um, and because we're doing it online, we're going to be using an equal symbol. Here, I'll put the greater than symbol there. Uh, and this means uh, if and only if. Right, so that would be the ordinary language, right? So first we have the negation, second the conjunction, right? Third the disjunction, the conditional is fourth, and fifth is the biconditional. These are our five.